with um, I want to give a huge shout out to Judith Tribe. Very knowledgeable guy. He knows his football. He knows his stuff. I'll leave his link to the bottom of the description. He makes Bears videos. He also makes conspiracy theory videos about why he thinks the world is flat. I honestly think his channel has more to offer. Hopefully, I'll make some more videos. If y'all want to make some suggestions on future videos he should make, please, you know, give him a holler in his videos. There's another guy named Bearsbound0695, I think. Um, another knowledgeable Chicago Bears video maker, but he's not TTC, but he makes Bears videos. And I was watching his videos. He gave analysis and the matchup breakdown on how he thinks the Bears are going to win. And, you know, I, I think he made some pretty good, solid points. There's another guy, too, named Walter Bearstown. He made a good hate week against me. And um, I have to give him um, props as well. Very knowledgeable. He knows his team. He knows his football. And I'm his friend, you know, even outside of this, you know, on Facebook or whatever. Met the guy in the YWC, the wrestling community. But I'm just going to go ahead and just, and yes, I wrote him down, as you can see, because I don't remember everything. Uh, I tend to forget about things sometimes. <laughs> My long-term memory is not as effective as it used to be, you know. So the Texans win this game of a score of 23-14. to In the first quarter, uh, we're running the no-huddle offense pretty well. Brock Oswaller, you know, he's communicating with his receivers, with the running backs pretty well. The defense could not bring anybody in to the game. And I felt like we had the defense on their heels, all right? The problem with Brock Oswaller is he tries to force the passes in a lot, especially when it comes to DeAndre Hopkins. So, like, he tried to throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins. We're already on Chicago Bears territory in the red zone about the score. And Hopkins catches the ball. And Tracy Porter from the New Orleans Saints, who has a Super Bowl with them, rips the ball out of DeAndre Hopkins' hands, and therefore we had a turnover. I said, oh, God, this is going to be a long game. Um, then as the Bears are driving the ball down the field, because Jay Cutler's not that bad of a quarterback. I mean, he's average, but he's he's okay, but he's not great, you know. Um, we had some horrible penalties called on us by Andre Hall, and a big, big goal line pass interference on Kareem Jackson that put the ball on the one yard line. Then they punched it out with, um, I think it was, his name was uh, Jeremy Lay. Jeremy Langford got a one yard. Touchdown runs to the Bears take a 7 nothing lead. Then um, Cutler fumbles the ball on 4th and 1. It actually was like a bad snap from his center. If they would have made that first down, I think the Bears would have went up 14 nothing because they were already driving on our territory. And they only needed inches. But the center, who was a rookie center for the Bears, he had a bad, it was like a bad miscommunication between him and Cutler, and the snap was like bobbled or something. I don't know if it was Cutler's fault or if it was the center hiked the ball too early, and they caused a fumble, and Cutler could not advance the ball, stopping his forward progress. Therefore, we were able to get the stop on fourth, fourth down and one. That was the end of the first. In the second quarter, we threw a touchdown pass to DeAndre Hopkins from Brock Oswaller. Uh, that put the Texans up 10-7. Uh, to 7. Then Eddie Royal, who I call a midget, who I'm going to have to eat crow because Eddie Royal is actually pretty good. He was able to get separation from the defenders. He was able to break free a couple of times. Eddie Royal got a 21-yard touchdown pass, and the Bears took a 14-10 to 10 lead at halftime. The Bears played with a sense of urgency in the first half, especially on that second drive when there was like 30 seconds left. They could have kneeled the ball and took it to half and then got the ball in the third quarter, but they said, no, we're going to take the lead in the half, then get the ball back. This, in my opinion, was the turning point of the game, and I felt like the Bears could have capitalized on this in the third quarter and defeated the Texans. Second half, DeAndre Hall intercepts Jay Cutler. All right, There was a holding penalty that put us out of position to score a touchdown because the interception was made on, on their own side of the field, so it put us in re the red zone automatically. So we kicked the field goal, made it 14-13. Okay, still a decent game. The third quarter, and you can ask Judah Tribe, the third quarter was trash. Um, there was only three points put on the board. It was mainly like a defensive game. Either one of the teams offensively was getting it. was no ball penetration between the Texans and the Bears' offensive, offensive fronts. It was just mainly defense. Just three and outs, 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 three and outs. That's all it was basically for the entire third quarter. So, Will Fuller in the fourth quarter gets an 18-yard touchdown pass. Uh, the Texans take the lead 20-14. to we kicked the extra point instead of going for two. All right, then the Texans ended up in the fourth quarter kicking another field goal, scoring 23-14. to 14. So not only was the second half pretty horrible because it was 14-10, to 10, there was only 13 points scored in the second half, and it was by the Texans. So 
for our defense to hold the Bears out of the second half with no points versus 14 in the first half is fucking amazing. Now, I want to go ahead and make this clear. All Sean Jeffries is a beast. Straight up. Kareem Jackson could not cover him. Jonathan Joseph could not cover him. Abouye could not cover him. It seemed like no matter who we were trying to defend this guy with, Andre Hall, nobody could cover him. And when, when you got that one-on-one -on -one coverage, all Sean Jeffries wins every time. For some reason, the Texans lack in the safety position and the corner position when it comes to big receivers or great receivers. And Chicago has that Alshon Jeffries. They got that young Andre Johnson-like caliber kind of player. And if he breaks free, he gets open. One-on-one -on -one covers, he's going to beat you every time. Especially if you got mediocre to smaller guys like a Kareem Jackson size. That's like putting up Derek Fisher to guard. That's like if Derek Fisher was trying to guard Kobe Bryant. That's basically what... We were doing on the defensive side when it came to Alshon Jeffries. He was just able... It, you could literally put him flies on shit and he would still catch the ball. We were like really... We were like basically glued to this guy and he was still making the catches. It was, it was incredible. I was even impressed. I said, wow, wow, this is amazing. I said, Alshon Jeffries could probably outbeat us alone. That's how sick he is on the field. Um, LaVon Miller, player of the game, well... He led the team in rushes, 28 rushes on 106 yards. Brock Oswaller, 231 yards, two touchdowns. He was 22 for 35, like a 70%. Um, Will Fuller, five catches, 107 yards, two touchdowns. They said that that is the, the most ever for like a first-round draft pick on opening day. And Will Fuller got the record, five catches, 107 yards, two touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins, five catches for 54 yards. Kind of a little quiet, but he was being doubled. He did manage to get a touchdown. Andre had one interception off of Cutler. Bears had three turnovers. Alshon Jeffries, four catches, 105 yards. Eddie Royal had one touchdown. Cutler had was 16 for 29, 276 yards and one touchdown. Jeremy Lankford, 17 rushes, 57 yards and a touchdown. Cutler was also sacked five times. And I also want to mention that I think that was the reason why the Texans were able to close this game out in the fourth quarter because under five minutes we sacked Cutler three times. And those were in pivotal key moments of the game now if you were to ask me and this is no disrespect to judah tribe or any bears fan watching this video but what i see how the players react to cutler is the same that i see in matt schaub in 2014 when we went to and 14 no disrespect but the players gave up on matt schaub they gave up on gary kubiak and other than Alson jeffries and maybe eddie royal and of course the run game a lot of these players look like they don't feel comfortable 100% with Jay Cutler. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not a Bears fan. I wouldn't know personally their personal connection. But from my vibe, from what I see on the field, I, when I look at Jay Cutler, I don't see a guy who motivates players. I don't, I don't see like if I was to wear a Bears uniform and played for the Bears, even as shitty as I am, as probably a football player as I probably am, um, I would find it very hard for me to come under that tunnel knowing that Jay Cutler is my quarterback and knowing the fact that he is on the roster. Because to me, I feel like I don't see him as a motivation. He's not a motivational speaker. He's not like a player. He's not like a, a player's kind of guy. He's just a guy that just shows up to work and then le he goes to work, performs, and then leaves and goes home. But the thing is, there's no morale. I don't see the morality with this guy. I don't see how he gives the team like good morale in the locker room and sometimes you need a spark like that like you you need something like that in your locker room and to me i just see like jay cutler is just that kind of guy like there's just some sort of some disconnection like he just looks unhappy all the time you know and i don't mean to, like you know how you look like when you hate your job like that's basically the kind of look he gives like he looks like he really doesn't want to be there and maybe like your head coach should just sit him down and say look you know i understand you've been here for a while but you kind of have like a complacency look to you Maybe you need to figure yourself out because in order for this team to move on, we need to know that you're here for the team 100%. Now, I know Jay Cutler can't win on his own. I know it's a team sport. But it looks like to me like in the fourth quarter, the Bears were not playing with any sort of um, – they weren't playing with any sort of uh, urgency at all. They were playing like they were ahead, even though they were down two scores with five minutes. They weren't they, – It to me, it looked like they I had already given up. That's the vibe that I got. Maybe I'm wrong. But again, hats off to the Bears. I know y'all got a big Monday night game next week against the Eagles. Uh, we're 
facing the Kansas City Chiefs next week. I don't want to go too far into that. I got a, a, um, a hate week against Chief Arag, who I think is a wonderful trash talker. And I think he's very entertaining. His videos, he makes me laugh. I, I, I enjoy watching Chief Arag and Village Boy and Dark Chief. And if I'm missing any other Chiefs fan, I apologize. But um, I watch Dark Chief's videos here and there. But I watch Chief Arag and Village Boy. Village Boy has a lot of knowledge of the game, too. He's an up-and-coming rook. Uh, he was a rookie last year, kind of semi this year. He's still kind of learning his steps. But Chief Arag's the man. Like, he's, he's a real cool cat. You know, I'm not kissing his ass. He's real cool. And I will be looking forward to trash talking him and Village Boy and maybe Dark Chiefs this week. So I don't know. We'll see what's up. Um, anyways, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, again, Jay Cutler, 276 yards, 16 for 29 and one touchdown. But he was also sacked five times, and he threw one interception. And uh, Brock Oswald, of course, you know, he did his thing, too. He was also sacked twice, so I don't want to make it seem like he's any perfect. But the Texans were able to win this game. I'm just so happy right now. I got my new Texans keychain right here, the gas station. And uh, I got a lot of videos to make. So I got to go ahead and sign out. Just want to give you guys a shout-out. Texans win. We're 1-0 to start the season. And I'll come out with my hate week probably, like, on a Tuesday because I still got to do a college. I still got to do my UT uh, recap. I'm going to be going over the UT game. For any of you Longhorn fans, stay tuned because I'm about to upload this video probably tonight, right after this one. And then I still got to do a Cubs recap and then a Texans uh, or Astros versus uh, Texas Rangers um, preview due to the fact that, you know, baseball's playoffs is near and we're like 18 games away. So I said I was going to make more Astros videos for my audience that likes baseball. So anyways, it's um, I still got to do an NFL tournament pick em update. Uh, on the on the victories today, and then I still got to do one for college football. So I still got five more videos to upload after this. So I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I talk too much. I ramble. It's the sexiest man alive. Like, comment, subscribe. Want to give a shout out to Ray Ray. Um, before I go, Brian Cushion tore his MCL. I saw Ray Ray's video. Ray Ray, I'm on your side about it. Um, I feel bad. This is his third tear of his knee. I know it's not his fault. Injuries happen. I'm sorry to hear about that, but uh. I would at least let him play out his contract uh, after he comes back after the bye, so he'll probably be out six weeks. I would let him play it out, but honestly, I would consider just releasing the guy because, again, it's taking up cap space, and he's now becoming it, – it's nothing personal. Like, this is a business standpoint from a GM standpoint from a uh, – you know, this is – NFL is a business. So we can't afford to, like, continue to have this guy on the payroll, and he can't perform, and he can't stay on the field. Same thing with Aaron Foster – it was unfortunate, you know, injuries happen. I know it's part of the game, but, you know, we can't keep a guy on the roster if he's just going to keep getting hurt. So I'm on your side. I agree with you. Uh, Brian Cushion is out for six weeks. He did tear his MCL on the first play. And I knew the way he was, like, laying down. I said, oh, I've seen this before. When he blew his knee out against the Jets and blew his knee out against Titans, same thing. I saw the same shit, the same ordeal. I said, yep, he tore something. I knew, he, I knew something his knee tore. MCL is not as bad as ACL, but still, this is his third tear. Um, maybe this is the sign that Cushion is gone. You know, maybe maybe this is a sign he's gone. So um, I think they'll probably. I think the best thing to do is just because he's given so much to the Houston organization. I say just let him play out the rest of this year to the best of his ability, if he can. And I would say pay him for the rest of the year anyway, even if he does decide to retire. Agree with you, Ray Ray, and then let him go about his business and try to either sign elsewhere or just retire or whatever he wants to do. But it, it's now becoming an issue. He's now becoming injury prone, and he's taking up too much cap, uh, salary cap space. We can't continue to pay a guy who's not going to be there to, to work. It's just a business, you know. So anyways, um, I'm sorry to hear about the Brian Cushion. I like you. You're a likable guy, but it is what it is. You know, it's a business decision, nothing personal. Um, but anyways, I'm signing out. I pretty much said everything I have to say. UT video coming up next.